Hello, and a very warm welcome back to the Gimme A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. My name is Ant, and today I want to talk a little bit about Randy Orton. Quite a divisive wrestler, quite a wrestler that you never quite know what you're going to get. Third generation superstar, obviously his father Bob Orton was a big part of WWF. And to many extent, Randy Orton has sort of surpassed his legacy as well in terms of what he's done within the industry. There are times when he seems to love wrestling, and apparently he did when he was younger. There's times when he really doesn't even seem like he wants to be there. And I don't even know what that is. I don't know if it's backstage things. We hear a lot of issues that he has backstage. Um, There's times when he feels like he's just going through the motions. His time in Evolution showed that he was handpicked to be one of the future superstars. I think it was Triple H who certainly invested a lot of time into him. And as a legend killer early on in his career, guys like McFoley put him over big time, you know? It's great that feud with Mick Foley and sort of solidified his legacy as a main eventer. He reportedly always had issues backstage uh, with outbursts backstage. He was issued a 60 day ban for unprofessional conduct. He was apparently very hard to work with and he's admitted that himself in times. But in recent years, it's been really hot and cold with Randy Orton. He's had some great feuds. If you look at the feud with Jeff Hardy, where he had a screwdriver going into his ear and twisting it, really good, unique, interesting stuff. Another one, um, his current feud with Edge, like the build-up to that has been wonderful. There's times when a build-up to a match has been great before, and it hasn't really ended up paying off. I mean, look at his feud with Jinder Mahal, which saw the return of a Punjabi prison match, which wasn't what we wanted to see it was it was long it was boring it went on for ages not just match but the feud then there was the feud with Bray Wyatt again that had potential during the early days of that feud to be great to be really great the idea of Orton joining the Hardy family the idea of Orton winning the Rumble and having to face Bray Wyatt And then as it got on and got closer to WrestleMania, it just got more and more weak going through the motions to the point where we get a WrestleMania match that was rubbish and had video projections and silliness. It's really weird. It it seems like sometimes they go in and if he's not bothered, it just is thrown out as junk. First of all, Orton as a face doesn't work for me. I think in terms of his character, he's much better as a heel. He He's more vicious as a face. He doesn't have that. It doesn't feel like he's he's very much of a face in real life. So working as a heel, it works, but the face doesn't work for me. A few years ago, I was watching a SmackDown show. We went to Sheffield to watch a SmackDown show. He was having a, a, a back and forth on Twitter with Bully Ray at the time. And Bully Ray was talking about uh, indie wrestling and stuff like that, and uh, as well as showing a picture of his dad. And Randy Orton like interjects himself and he's saying, like, well, I, I draw money and I draw houses and it's all this amount of money and it's nothing compared to you guys that are working in bars and stuff like this. And I'm at this SmackDown show thinking, first of all, When I booked the tickets, I didn't know if Randy Orton was there or not. I didn't even know if it was a SmackDown or Raw show. But I'm not there to watch him necessarily. I mean, the main event of that was Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton. I didn't know it was going to be them. Uh, If it was them, I probably would have left to get me train early. I mean, Randy's moves are haven't changed in years. I mean, there's a power slam. The RKO is brilliant, and it's sort of been built up with a great legacy. The DDT sort of don't even get a pop anymore as it, as it used to vintage Orton, i believe it is now it's and the rest of it's a, a lot of kicks and punches i mean the the re- only reason i did stay to watch that match was cuz aj styles was in it in a triple threat and aj styles can have a wrestling match with a broom um so it's weird his RKO and the RKO legacy is special, but the the rest of his moveset's limited. He can have these amazing moments and amazing build-up to moments that can sometimes just fall flat. He doesn't really excite me that much as a superstar anymore. 
Which is a shame, because I think there are times when he seems really into it and seems to be doing unique stuff. So who knows how this WrestleMania match with Edge is going to be. It's had a great build. The stuff with Beth Phoenix has been great. Randy Orton's promos have been wonderful. His stuff with retiring Matt Hardy from WWE. Brilliant. But will the main event or, or match at WrestleMania? It could be the main event, because, I mean, it's had the best build, I'd say. Is it going to be any good? Let's be honest, it's not guaranteed. I mean, that's my sort of thoughts on Randy Orton. I'm confused. I'm conflicted. Because sometimes I think he's great. Sometimes I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts on Randall Keith Orton down below in the comments. Let us know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you're enjoying this. There's plenty more videos on the channel like this. So just hit the give me a whole yeah icon and, and see more. Um... Personally, I'd quite like to see Randy Orton step back a bit if he's not going to be into it and let some of the guys that clearly love it and clearly go out and work just so hard every night, I'd like him to step back and let them go. My opinion may disagree with me. Tell me who you want me to talk about next as a wrestler, sort of a, a, a just opinion videos and... Uh, Everyone stay safe, and until next time, keep it G-A-H-Y, gay.